What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gary. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing the Integra subframe right here into my 2000 Honda Civic hatchback. Now, why would you do that? Why would you install an Integra subframe into your Honda Civic? Well, this Integra subframe, with the use of Hasport's EKK2 mounts, or in my case, some Chinese knockoffs of them, will allow the motor to sit two inches further back and it'll give you better clearance for your radiator. One of the issues with doing a K-swap into this chassis is the power steering pump. It's not gonna clear the hood. There are aftermarket options or you can use an EP3 Civic pulley, but in my case, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna eliminate all of the power steering components. So I'm gonna be depowering this rack right here and if you don't know what depowering is, you will find out in this video. One of the bad things about junkyard shopping is the weather. I went the day right after it rained, and fortunately for me, I found this from a 1995 Integra LS. The problem is that it was in a puddle, so I literally was soaking wet trying to pull this sucker out. But you know what? At least I got it, and now I can use it for this project. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is taking off the inner and outer tie rod ends on both sides. I've already bought replacements so I won't be needing them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the power steering rack attached to the subframe so that I can pull these parts out. So in order to take these off I'm going to have to disconnect the line right here, pull off these straps right here and you can see it's already pretty bad down there because this thing is over 20 years old and you can see it right there too really bad so these things need to be replaced anyways and here they are taken off i had to use this big old wrench right here just to get them off okay and on to the next step which is disconnecting these lines right here i'm gonna one two three and four there's actually six but i've already taken these two off okay i've taken them off here all four of them are what I did was I had to cut the lines with the good old grinder over there and then I was able to put the uh, number 12 wrench over it and loosen them up and pull them out. I didn't want to use the open-ended side because I might strip them and that's a big no-no. So the next step would be to take this big old nut off. I don't know if I have this size. I'll take a look. This dimple prevents the nut from unscrewing itself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill this dimple and then I'm going to pull out the nut right here. You guys see right there I've drilled it out so I should be able to pull this nut off with ease hopefully fingers crossed okay I think I might be fine I got a 36 millimeter socket for this nut but the problem is this shaft so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to twist the steering column so that the shaft moves this direction so that I can slip this socket on and I was able to do it guys look no more shaft all I did was just rotate this and the shaft extended on this side so now I can pull this nut off I was surprised how easy this thing came off I thought I needed a breaker bar but I I just did it with my hands so make sure you remove that dimple first on the bottom before you unscrew it and if you take a look hopefully the camera can focus all the threads are intact nothing is messed up so I can reuse this without worrying Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this unit off. It looks like it's just two 12 millimeter bolts that are holding it down. And guys, be careful. These two holes right here, they squirt. You can see there's power steering fluid all over the place. Uh, I kind of got it on the frame, bottom of the frame right here, but uh, just be careful. Wear for safety goggles. Fortunately, I was wearing safety goggles. It didn't hit me, but uh, it would have been a pretty bad day getting hit with power steering fluid right in the face. But taking this unit off was fairly straightforward, just two 12 millimeter bolts and I used a flathead to help uh, remove it. But I still need to get to the tensioner back here so I'm gonna have to pull off the rack itself in order to get access to the rear. And here is the tensioner itself. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some reference marks on it so that when I reinstall it again it goes back into the same spot. And here are my reference marks up here and down here. And you notice I put a line right through these so that I know that this one is facing this direction and the bottom one is facing that direction and has no line going through it. I've taken the tensioner off over here 
And the next part is to take out the shaft, which I think is going to be a little hard. Here is the setup. And I do have a problem though. This shaft is not going to go into that hole right there. So I'm going to use a half inch extension to help push it through. I got the shaft off. This was a very difficult part. I banged the heck out of this area with a three pound hammer and it still would not come out because what it would do, it would compress and go back up just like a shock. And that's because of this ring right here, this seal right here, not allowing uh, this uh, shaft to pass through. So I had to bust the grinder out and here are the results. I got this ring off. Before I put everything back together, I'm gonna clean it up real nice Looks like there's a bunch of buildup right here. And then I'm gonna grease it all up as much as I can and put everything back together. And here's the grease that I'm gonna be using for this rack. So the rack itself is all buttoned up and I also have new CV boots, uh, inner and outer tie rod ends that I'm gonna be installing. So the unit's somewhat complete. I still gotta zip tie the boots to these ends. So now what I need to do is I need to plug these up and in order to do that I have several options. One option is to go find bolts from your local hardware store that will fit these and you just screw them right in. The other option is to pull this tubing out of it and weld the other end so you can just pretty much screw it right in also. Or the third option is to pull this out and JB weld it. So basically you're sealing it up and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to JB weld it because I have a ton of JB weld for some reason. And after that, I'm going to install them into these locations so that it doesn't leak. I had to bust the old grinder out again to get these things out of here. So now they're tubeless in a sense. So I just got to fill up these holes. Uh, one thing I wasn't able to get was the adapter that went to this one. It was still stuck on the Integra. So I went over to my Civic uh, rack and I was able to pull this one off of it and it fits perfectly into the Integra rack. Who would have known Honda interchangeability? See, I told you guys, I have a bunch of JB Weld. So now I'm gonna mix it up and fill the holes. So as I'm waiting for the plugs to dry up, I'm gonna start installing the power steering rack and I've got these over here. These are brand new front lower control arms that I'm going to be installing onto the rack over here. And I've also got new bushings and uh, the power steering rack bushings right here. So these are part number 16.10102G. Uh, G for graphite. And this one has a part number of B1101-BL. Here's the top portion of the front subframe and you can see the bushings have already been installed for the stock sway bar, the front lower control arm, and you can see the outer tie rod, the inner tie rod, CV boots, and it goes all the way to this other side. All of these items have been replaced with either new bushings or new parts. Oh, and also I've got the plugs in. I JB welded them and they should not leak. So there's two right here and there's four on this unit over here. Uh, two in the front and two in the rear right here. So now it is time to install this subframe into the car. Okay, one issue with installing this Integra subframe is this right here. I got to take this off because you can see it's hitting it. Uh, this was used for the charcoal canister since this is a 19 or actually this is a 2000 Honda Civic. It had the charcoal canister in this area and these two little uh, bottom pieces down here, it was holding it up. So I got to get this unit out so that I can install the subframe. So I took that piece off and it is four spot welds, two on top and two on the bottom. And here's the piece right here. So now Hopefully I can install this front subframe. So the subframe is installed, but one thing I noticed, I forgot to take out this line for the charcoal canister. So I'm gonna have to drop the subframe again 
and take out this line because I don't think I can get to it. The subframe itself is all bolted up. The last part of this installation is to attach the rack and pinion from the Integra to the steering column of the Honda Civic. And for that, you will need the adapter from the Integra in order for it to work. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. I was thinking about putting everything together and making one long video so you guys can watch, but I think that's gonna take away most of the details that go into this swap. I know that in the end, it's still a case swap, but I think every case swap has its own unique issues or features, and I want you guys to see what I run into. So for example, you guys saw the removal of the D-Series and the Civic's front subframe, and you also saw the preparation for the Integra subframe, all the new bushings installed, depowering of the Integra steering rack, and also the installation of the Integra subframe into the Civic. You can use a 92 to 95 Honda Civic front subframe, but the problem with that is that you won't get the quicker steering ratio of the Integra's rack and pinion. So that's why I got the Integra front subframe with the Integra rack and pinion, just so I can get that quicker steering ratio. For the next part, I will be working on the front knuckle. So make sure you hit that subscribe button for future content. And also don't forget to hit the like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.